we're going to start this demo painting using some photos that I took out in Colorado. Uh, this is the main one right here. We've got a stream uh, that's running into the background with mountains that you can see in the distance here. We're going to use this for the basic painting and then use a couple other reference uh, photos for some of the other points of interest. So for the mountains in the background, what we're going to do is use this slide as reference for the mountains and then this grouping of trees right here and the shrubs will then be used in the middle ground so that we can give some interest to the middle ground. Also, I'd like to put in uh, some aspens, like this little grouping of trees right here, as the center of interest in the painting. What I uh, want to do is use uh, this sketch right here as an example of what we're going to be doing. The aspens will be put right in this area here. The sunlight will be coming from this direction and shining light on that area. Visually, we'll walk into the painting through the stream right here, which will lead us right to the aspens, and then we can wander in the background uh, and show some atmospheric perspective and depth to the painting. As you can see, I've already toned my canvas to knock out all of the white, and I'm going to be ready to start the painting. I've set my sketch up right next to me right here so that I can see it while I'm working and that's what I'm going to base my initial sketch on my canvas. Uh, also I've got all of my paints set up just like I've shown you in uh, the color charts. Uh, I've got a rack for my brushes that I'll be using so any wet brushes will go there and then I always keep a paper towel right next to me to be wiping it off and there's my uh, minnow spirits that I use for thinning out my paints. Uh, I also uh, then have all of my tools right next to me here so I've got my brushes all set up right there with any of the tools that I uh, will think that I need. Uh, so also in the, the cabinet that I use here this little area right here, this drawer, is what I use for cleaning my brushes. So I have a little strainer at the bottom to clean. And then under the desk is my uh, trash can where I put all of my used paper towels. So with that being said, and my reference photo is up on the screen, what I do is I keep my computer monitor right next to my easel so I can see the reference material that I am using for the painting I'm working on. And most important of all, there's my coffee cup and my warmer. Without that, I'd probably not be able to paint. Okay, I think we're ready to uh, start painting. What I'm going to do is basically use my sketch that I have setting up here as my reference since we don't really need any uh, amount of detail, we're just going to rough in the shapes first and then break down the lights and darks. So here we go. The first thing I'm doing is probably one of the important ones and that's establish your uh, horizon line. Uh, and most of the times you don't want to put it right in the middle, you want to have a little bit of difference in the size between this area and uh, the area below. But it'll work anyway. The rules are always meant to be broken. So now I'm just going to really rough in uh, the shapes as I see them on the sketch. Um, and this will be the bank of trees and rocks that are on the left hand side. And then as I bring the uh, the stream down here, these will be the shrubs and the rocks that, that will be on the left side of the painting. Uh, now moving over to the other bank, um, as you can see I'm just going to roughly bring the shape in to approximate what shape my uh, sketch has. And this is where I talked about putting our center of interest. Uh, and putting the aspen trees in here 
here will be a grouping of the pines that are in the middle ground. Uh, so we've got we've got one basic shape here with the little bit of protrusions that we have here. We've got another shape here, and then we've got another shape in the background, uh, and then the shape of the stream. So those are our our basic shapes. I'll rough in just generally where we're going to put our mountains so that we have a feel for them. Uh, and what we'll probably do is, as we go on, have some clouds floating right around the, the peaks of the mountains to give some feeling of the height of what we're seeing here. So right now we basically have the, the rough shapes put in. We can kind of step back and look at that and determine if those look like they're going to work. So as I determined on the sketch, it felt like it was correct. So now let's break down a little bit of the value structure that we have. So since I've got the sun coming from this direction right here, all of this area will be dark. And so uh, everything that is in this shape, so let's think about it as shapes. So we're talking about this shape right here. Everything pretty much in this shape with the exception of maybe a little bit, since the sun is coming down, a little bit of this area might be hit in the sunlight, but most of it is going to be in the dark. So let's go ahead and put it all dark. And what we want to realize is that once we put the value down here, anything that we put in there can have a variety of colors, but it can not be much different than the value that we assign to this. Now, since I'm just using one color, and what I'm using is transparent red oxide, uh, there's going to be limits to the range of value right now. So let's go ahead and break down the other somewhat dark areas, and that will be these middle ground distances of the trees. And all of this is just a, a rough approximation. So when you're laying things in, especially with a landscape, uh, you don't have to be uh, super accurate as if you're doing a, a portrait where if you kind of misproportion the nose or the eyes, it's going to really seem a little crazy. Here, all we have to keep in mind is that as we go back, things are going to be smaller. So these same trees I'm going to have on the background, but they'll be very small, like this in proportion. So you want to keep that in mind to create a visual perspective. So anything that goes back, obviously, and that's a simple thought, is that it's going to be smaller. But at the same time, the values are going to be uh, a lot less as you go back. And then to create that atmospheric feeling, you're going to then modify and take out the chroma or intensity of the color as you go back. So we're going to have a little bit of a field or a rolling hill right here, right behind these mountains here, or behind these trees right here. Uh, and then as we, and the light's coming this way, so we do want to give a little bit of shape to the mountains that we put in here. So the shadow side is going to be on the right side here. And you don't have to get too detailed with it, just rough it in right now. So that now we've got a little bit of the background. One of the things that I need to do is, in one of the other uh, tools that I end up having, plus my uh, paper towel, is a rag. Because a rag works out <coughs> just a little bit better. And I dip it in my mineral spirits to bring out some of the highlights. So this is roughly the area where those aspens are going to go. So we're going to kind of pull that out just a little bit so that we know that there's going to be a little bit of highlight there. And then the water, as you go back, is going to pick up the sky. So that's going to be 
a little bit lighter in the background right here because it's reflecting the sky. Also, let's go ahead and wipe out just a little bit of the sky so we have a little bit better understanding about the value because the sky obviously is going to be one of the lightest things except for the reflection in the water. So let's keep working on that. And then I'm going to just rough in some of, there's going to be some shrubs in the uh, right hand side here. So I'm going to just give some rough shapes right now to show those. Uh, that got a little bit too dark. Uh, and then we're going to have a little bit of dark value in the foreground. I'll go ahead and, and put that in first so that we have that feeling. So the shadows, that's going to be as if this hill or mountain right here casts a little bit of shadow right through this area right here. Okay, so now I've got roughed in this shape here, pretty much is all of the shadow area. A little bit of shadow area along the edges of these trees because the light's coming this way. And then pretty much this area in here will have a few little uh, highlights with the shrubs. Uh, so as I put the shrubs in here, I'll just roughly give some shape to them by um, painting where I think the shadows are for the shapes based on the light source. Okay, so now let me just, this is getting a little bit too dark back in here. Okay, so now roughly what we have is we've got the, the foundation for the painting laid in. And once we have this, then we can start adding just a, a little bit more detail. Not getting into the color quite yet. I'm going to add some of the rocks that I've drawn in the sketch, which you may not be able to see here. Okay, we're going to continue putting some of the values in here. Um, and see what we can do.